Hey everyone, this is Exploring Fiction, and welcome back to another video. So today, I'm bringing you my complete thoughts on The Book of Boba Fett Season 1. So before we get into it, there will be spoilers for all of Season 1 of The Book of Boba Fett ahead, so you have been warned. And just to give you guys a little idea of how I'm laying out this video, I'm going episode by episode, then my overall thoughts. And the coverage of the first three episodes and episode five will be a little light because I already have videos about those episodes up on my channel. So if you want, you can go and check them out. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. So guys, the Book of Boba Fett, I thought, after seeing the entire season, was not too good. But let's get down into an episode by episode basis. So with episode one, I like seeing his escape from the Sarlacc pit and how he was captured by Tuscans, but overall I was confused by Boba's decision to stay with the Tuscans, and the action scene at the end, which was in the present day, was really boring. And so this episode for me was okay. Again, the, the whole Sarlacc pit escape was cool. I, I found that to be good spectacle, and a good little sequence. And I thought him being captured by Tuscans after being stripped of his armor by Jawas was pretty cool. But again, as you guys probably know if you saw my earlier Book of Boba Fett video, I just cannot get behind the idea of Boba Fett becoming one with the Tuscans or becoming part of their clan, which we don't really see too much in this episode. But anyway, that's kind of a precursor of my thoughts to come. So episode one overall, it was okay. The action scene in this episode was pretty boring. And I, that goes for a lot of this series, but episode one was an okay start. Episode two was definitely a little bit better for me action-wise. That whole train raid sequence was good. Very good. I was very entertained. But again, I was confused on why Bobo was connected so tightly to the Tuscans. I realized that he kind of became part of their clan once he saved that younger Tuscan from that monster in the first episode. But... I just feel like Boba as a character wouldn't suddenly have a found family moment with these Tuscans. Even if his escape from the Sarlacc pit and being sw swallowed by the Sarlacc was such a life-changing, viewpoint-changing experience, I feel like Boba would revert to his old ways and either kill the Tuscans and force them to help him either get to a ship or get out off the planet of Tatooine, or he would just escape from them and go off on his own. So really, I I could see the storytelling elements they were putting in with the, Boba joining the Tuscans, but I just wasn't on board from the get-go, and so that hampered my, my enjoyment of Episode 2. Now, Episode 3 was the worst of the whole show, by far. Of course, I've talked about the Power Ranger biker gang and how out of place they felt, and I still believe that. And the whole Boba fighting Black Kersantan fight fell flat for me. And so again, the whole Tuscan clan got killed in this episode. And well, again, like I said, I don't like Boba with the Tuscans. I could see the obvious choice of keeping the Tuscans around just in the background until Boba needs an army for his new crime family later on would make sense. So them killing the Tuscans for me was just a, a another bad decision. So even though I don't like the Tuscans, I saw the obvious connection that the Tuscans would be his hired muscle later down the line, and they just killed that storyline in this episode. And so for that and many other reasons, episode three was definitely the worst. Episode 4, I felt, was a more promising one, and I love seeing the Slave 1 take out the Sarlacc, and we finally got more into the storyline of the whole crime war, especially with that meeting Boba Fett had with those other Tatooine families at the end. Kersantan joining Boba as hired muscle was pretty cool, and Danny Trejo as a Rancor Keeper was great to see in Star Wars. But again, they're throwing out all these bones in this episode of the Hutt twins being the bad guys, or that biker gang that supposedly killed the Tuscans, but the Hutts in this episode just give him a gift and leave, and I thought it would be fake, but really they're building up to these pikes without doing 
build-up at all. And so I thought that the whole Hutz leaving was going to be a fake-out, and it really wasn't. And so that was just an odd, another odd choice to me. But overall, episode four on its own was pretty decent. I like seeing Boba and Fennec's relationship develop to where they are now. So that was pretty cool. Now on to episode five. And I already have a full video on this subject, but I thought it was top two in the series. Seeing Mandalorian's journey after the end of Mandalorian season two felt like we were right where we left off with both Mando, the Darksaber, and all. And well, I completely love this episode and what it did. It definitely felt out of place completely in the Book of Boba Fett. So, yeah, being a part of this series, it was definitely off. But for what it was as just an hour of an episode in Star Wars, I loved it. That brings us to episode 6, which is also in contention for my top two episodes. Again, I love seeing the continued journey of Mando. I love seeing Grogu training with Luke Skywalker. It was everything I wanted. I finally got to see an interaction between Luke and Ahsoka, which the world knows that we've all been clamoring to see that. And the whole standoff between Cobb Vanth and Cad Bane was one of the most tense scenes in the show. And the return of the Clone Wars bounty hunter was a welcome surprise. And honestly, I like Cobb Vanth a lot in this episode too. I thought he was a really good character. But just like episode 5, episode 6 was just so out of place in this show, and Boba Fett only showed up at the end, which I guess is more you could say for, than for episode 5. So again, this episode, as a part of the book of Boba Fett, just felt like a complete detour. However, I loved almost everything about this episode. That brings us to the season finale, episode 7. And I'm very mixed on this one. Every time Mando was on screen, I was invested, but all the action scenes felt so slow and uninspired. I understand that'll happen with a Rancor, as they're slow to begin with, but wow. I like the idea of Boba's allies all being cornered and taken down in theory, but again, I didn't feel any urgency. The execution was just so off. The Gamerans... The Gameron guards being pushed off the cliff was just so anticlimactic. Like if Boba had more allies, or a bigger army, or we got to know his allies a little bit better, then maybe you would be afraid. But, but the way it was put together was just choppy and slow, and I didn't care. Cad Bane's supposed death at Boba's hand was a fitting end. It just honestly felt rushed and left a lot to be desired in execution. Because for me, I know about that unused Clone Wars episode where Boba and Cad Bane have that standoff and Boba kills Cad Bane. So I and a lot of other hardcore Star Wars fans, which you, what you might be, I'm not really sure if you're listening, if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan or not, but their history was detailed in the Clone Wars a little bit. So I understood the stakes there, but for a more casual audience, they wouldn't know. And either way, honestly, I felt that was a fitting way to end Cad Bane if they choose to go that route, but it just fell flat in this context. Also, I understand a lot of Star Wars fans will be happy to see Grogu go back to Mando instead of train with Luke, but I think that's the complete wrong story choice. Grogu taking up Yoda's lightsaber and training to be a Jedi seemed to be a perfect place for his character to be, but now Mando will be tied down with the kid for the foreseeable future, and it feels a bit undermining the finale of Mando Season 2. That whole season was just building up to getting Grogu back to his kind, which is the Jedi and Luke, and now he's just right back to where he started before, so I don't really get why they decided to do that. It just seems like a whole waste of time to me. Fennec killing the Pike leaders at the end of this episode was a cool scene, and maybe the most intense of the whole episode. And the whole reveal, the post credit scene that Cobb Vanth is still alive, was expected for me. I mean, looking back at the episode where he was supposedly shot and killed, the place he was shot by Cad Bane didn't look to be lethal at all. I knew he was pretty much going to be still alive from the get-go. And Boba at the end saying maybe they aren't cut out for this whole daimyo of Tatooine thing got me thinking. Maybe Cobb Vanth could be modded by 
that guy at the end and become the quote-unquote sheriff of Tatooine or Mos Espa? I don't know, but that would be an interesting idea. So guys, now that I've talked on an episode-by-episode basis, let me move into my overall final thoughts here. So, the positives I had for this show. Everything with Mando and Luke on screen. The whole criminal war idea at the you know that they tried to build up throughout the season was good. Cobb Vanth was good just like he was in season two of The Mandalorian, and seeing Cad Bane just made made my spirits soar because he was one of my favorite characters from Clone Wars. And he was brought to live action effortlessly, and it was great. But the negatives for me are the pacing of most of the episodes, the uninspired action scenes, the Power Ranger bikers, and Boba's sudden change of heart to be a good guy. For me, Boba's change of heart didn't really feel in line with what he would do, so it just fell flat. And Boba Fett in this show felt like a different character, and I feel like Fennec, Mando, and Kersantan were together a mix of what Boba could have and probably should have been. Overall, the whole Mando, Grogu, Luke storyline was a good takeaway from this show, but really, watching episodes 5 and 6 was the only thing worth it about the Book of Boba Fett for me. And just a quick little side note here, I like how the theme song after the finale changed to say Boba Fett's name instead of just the wordless grunting from earlier. I just had a gripe about that in my first Book of Boba Fett video, so I thought I'd mention I like where they went with the whole theme song. But anyway, guys, the Book of Boba Fett was just a weird mess for me, and I I did not really enjoy it, and I'm really worried now for Season 3 of The Mandalorian. All the episodes directed here by Robert Rodriguez just were not it for me. They just all just felt really strange and slow. And what they did with the titular character of Boba Fett did not line up with what I thought it would be or should be at all. And so I am disappointed to say that I did not enjoy the book of Boba Fett. Outside of episodes 5 and 6, it was pretty lackluster. But anyway, guys, that's what I have to say. Let me know what you think below in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed or agreed. Subscribe if you're new here. I would love to have you, and I will see you all next time.